Let me, let me just start with a question to, to all the panelists. Why should we invest, with your experience, why should we invest in Africa mining? Now, I think Africa has got phenomenal potential, as you know. Uh, and we combine Africa as one continent, but actually there are multiple countries within it. Sure. And the potential is significant depending on whichever country you look at. It's rich in mineral. It's uh, very rich in terms of uh, host governments as well. And one shouldn't really think about the short-term swings which you will see. Typically, you will see short-term swings, but you've got to take a long-term view. So in terms of the resources availability, I think you can't look at a long-term vision for a mining company without looking at Africa. Even well-established first world countries are looking into emerging markets to grow their resource base. That's the first reason. Second reason is in terms of long-term partnerships, if you look at the history of mining, yes, you will go through ups and downs, but the long-term trajectory is quite high, and I've seen that operate in, uh, in Africa, now in India, and also in Latin America. The area where we should probably think about it differently is we focus on the government, we focus on the capital, we focus on the fiscal regime, everything. That's great. But where enough work isn't going in is winning the hearts and minds of your own employees and the community around you. If you can get those two on your side, automatically your relationship at the capital and at the various state and uh, uh, regional levels is taken care of. Second area which I've found good examples of where it is successful is upfront we don't plan what the town will look like after the mine has actually closed. Okay. And I think there it's developing what I would call horizontal integration. We are busy integrating upstream, downstream, but the horizontal integration of developing standalone enterprises which effectively can stand on its feet and in 50, 60 years time you wouldn't recognize that you're looking at a former mining town. The best example I can think of is Johannesburg. You take a look at it today, you don't think it's actually built on the actual foundation of mining. It's a standalone, largest city in South Africa, good financial centers, very good infrastructure. That's probably the vision one needs to take. It's becoming more difficult to invest in mining. And it's not because we don't want to invest in mining. It's our shareholders are rotating largely out of mining for a variety of reasons. And thermal coal is, of course, a big challenge for, that, for the industry. So the availability of total aggregate capital to invest into mining is shrinking. Sure. And when you look at the junior markets in, in, in Canada, or whether you look at our capital investment programs for the majors, we used to spend $18 billion a year in capital investment. And now we shrunk to about six and a half. Of that six and a half, 5.5 is just to stand still. It's our maintenance capital. So our growth capital that we need to invest has become really small. So what that means is that the returns that we seek have to be quite good. And when you have political uncertainty or continuous rent seeking that eat away the returns, money moves around the world where it is less risky. So I must say, I think we were living in the past of it was unlimited capital you could put in in many different high-risk jurisdictions, but that risk now has, has changed. Um, and with that in mind, I would say, of course, everything starts with the ore body. And if you have a great ore body, you have a really good beginning. Now, however, if the political uncertainty is there, the ore body is still there and it's not developed. And I think the future model for us is a partnership. We have to find a way to partner with the junior community across mining companies, not just to de-risk the infrastructure and the capital, but also make sure that um, our host communities and the governments understand that this is no longer a, a very lucrative industry that it used to be on the back of a Chinese boom. So having said that, I do think there is, of course, plenty of opportunities around Africa, and I think it's upon us as an industry to make sure that we, we generate the returns. Um, otherwise, the return destruction that we had over the last 20 years makes it increasingly difficult to raise capital across the world. We always complain. We always feel that we're uh, coming third in the race. Um, but if you really look at Africa, 
starting with South Africa, it's got world-class assets across the spectrum, base metals, precious metals, so on. If you go to Botswana, world-class diamond deposits. The same with Namibia, Mozambique. If you go to Tanzania, it's got tier one gold assets. DRC, there's no doubt that it's up there with the best in the world. Same with Zambia, Sudan, Egypt, Ghana, Mali. Um, you know, so when you look, and we never, never stop and look at this, and this continent is, and we always talk about it, we have this massive natural endowment, but we don't steward it properly. We, you know, so there's every reason to invest in this continent in natural resources and particularly in metals and mining, as well as oil and gas. We've got all these gas fields down the east coast, the west coast, in the Gulf. So, so surely in a place like Ndaba, we should sit and reflect on this and say, why, we've got great people as well. Absolutely. I've demonstrated that you can build a world-class company, a standout company with Africans in Africa. So you can't blame its people, you can't blame its endowment. So you've got to look at something else. And for me, it's our relationship with our host countries and more importantly, it's our politicians. You know, they need to stop and think. And as I said yesterday, it's quite a good idea to have a strategy and it's great to see West Africa putting something together. But you know, SADAC is already established, why don't we do that? And why don't we try and think a little bit longer term, and this goes for the industry as well, the mining industry, because we all talk about risk. You heard yesterday in the panel, risk. Yeah. What does risk do? It drives short-termism, because the fund managers and everyone want to come in and they just want their money out. And you know, likewise with investors. So we are short-term, the government becomes short-term, we all exploit everything, we don't, and all we do is screw everything up for the next generation. So, you know, that's the re there's lots of reasons to come to Africa. It's whether we welcome those investments and encourage them for the long term. I work for a very large private equity fund, so we have a slightly different approach to perhaps the large mining companies, you know, the CEOs whom I'm here with today. We clearly are highly focused on returns. As a private equity fund, that is our sole reason for existing. When we look across the African continent, you know, we too see an incredibly rich mineral endowment with grades in certain jurisdictions and certain commodities that are just off the charts. Think what, where we come, you know, our perspective is, what is the return that we could garner versus the risk that we're taking? And we view that across, not only across Africa, but across the world. And at this point in time, we have roughly a third of our portfolio in North and South America, roughly a third in Africa, and the rest across Australasia. So we have found these types of opportunities that have enticed us into investing in Africa. And frankly, we've been, we've been pretty successful with a number of our opportunities across Africa. So we continue to look for those standout opportunities which don't necessarily fit within the gold sector, you know, they might be slightly niche commodities. We look for those opportunities where we can create value for our shareholders. And, you know, on a term basis, we're not three month focused or day in, day out focused because we don't have a share price to watch. So we're looking at a four to five year term, which some might say is short termism. But from a, you know, from a private equity perspective and from a patient capital perspective, given what we see in the markets these days, that's actually pretty long-term capital, you know, if you're looking at a five, six, seven-year time frame. So we see a number of reasons to come and invest in Africa. You know, and I, I don't want to go down the complaining route, but <laughs> we do see risk, unfortunately. And, and much of that risk revolves around the uncertainty. 